Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Willow Creek Employment Services Team Business Ownership Workshop Series. This is a series of workshops that are going to focus on the whole subject of business ownership and whether or not it's a pathway that makes some sense for you. This is part one that we'll be covering today, and it will focus on is business ownership a right for you? So let's get started. As you can see, this is the first of a multi-part series that will cover a number of different dimensions of what it means to actually be in business for yourself. So we're going to start with whether or not business ownership is something that really makes sense for you. One of the great places that uh, we believe that makes sense to start is just to reference back to scripture and use it as a guide in some way. This is a passage from Proverbs 11:14. It simply says, where there is no guidance, a people fails, but in an abundance of counselors, there is safety. One of the things you'll find me encouraging throughout this series is that you have resources and people that you tap into for counsel and advice as you go through the process of exploring business ownership for yourself. Now, you're probably going to feel a little bit of a fire hose effect throughout this whole series uh, because I've got a lot of information I'm going to pass along to you. And what I'm really looking for you to do is to grab nuggets. I hope that they will be gold nuggets for you. And well, if they're not, maybe there will be some chicken nuggets. And well, you get to decide which is which, but hopefully we'll have more gold nuggets than chicken nuggets for you. Let me tell you a little bit about my own story so that you kind of understand where I'm coming from and why I'm uh, the individual who is hosting this series for you. I am somebody who went from the world of a career uh, in corporate America, as we commonly refer to it, and uh, moved into business ownership for myself now some 18 years ago. Mm -hmm. My history is with a number of different companies, uh, a name that you might recognize, Automatic Data Processing, or ADP, was a company that I spent almost 20 years with and left in 1992 as the VP of Client Services for it. Um, I was very fortunate to join ADP at a time that was early in my career, and it was uh, a time in which ADP was expanding, and they opened up a new division or started a new division by purchasing two little companies that had an enterprise software offering that focused on the automotive industry, the car dealership market. I happened to be there at the right time. Hired on as employee number three here in the uh, Chicago corporate offices and had a great run with them. We were able to grow that business substantially and turn it into about a $450 million business uh, by the time I left in 1992. Left there, went off and did a couple of other startups with a couple of brand names you probably don't recognize, but they were small startups, one in the insurance brokerage industry uh, called Ebix and another one called Trizetto, which was a company that focused on healthcare administration software. I left there in the mid 90s, uh, took a sabbatical for about three years, as a matter of fact, pursued some things of interest, did some freelance consulting, joined a company by the name of Mincom, which is an enterprise software provider that competes against SAP and Oracle. That was in 1998. And that was a position that I maintained. I, I operated uh, somewhat uniquely. I live in the Northwest suburbs of, of uh, Chicago. And uh, my offices were in Denver, Colorado, because my company was based in Brisbane, Australia. And I commuted back and forth between Denver and Chicago for about four years uh, through 1998 until I decided to leave corporate life and consider doing something on my own. And I connected with a little business by the name of the Entrepreneur Source. And I'll tell you a little bit about that story. But here's a flashpoint for you. Her name is Katie. Katie is the youngest of my wife and I's four children. My wife and I have been married for uh, approaching five decades. We have four children, and this picture is a picture of Katie when she was about 12 years old in 2002. I traveled about 90% of the time, and it began to have a big impact upon my family. And Katie made a comment to me one day that went something like this, gee, Dad, it'd be nice to see something of you other than a cardboard cutout. Now, for any of you that might have children, you can imagine what that does to uh, to someone whenever you get that arrow through the heart, so to speak, that says, you know, I think that I've got my priorities a little bit misaligned. And the thing that I learned from that, that moment was that you can get very busy making a living for your family and thinking you're doing all the right things, but you've forgotten what it means to make a life. 
So I made a decision to retire from corporate America uh, in mid-year of 2002. Uh, came back to Chicago. It wasn't quite clear on what it was that I wanted to do, but I knew that I would like to do something on my own. I wasn't ready to check out of working completely. I wanted to do something that would give me a lot of freedom and flexibility and time to spend with Katie. I happened to have a conversation with one of my old ADP friends uh, over the course of that summer of 2002. And my friend Dave, who was in uh, Portland, Oregon, shared with me the fact that he was working with a coach from a business called the Entrepreneur Source. And the Entrepreneur Source was a rather unique concept. It was a franchise concept that had a business model that focused on coaching people who had an interest or a curiosity in exploring business ownership for themselves and then help them to identify opportunities potentially in the world of franchising or a licensing distributorship kind of an arrangement that might potentially offer an opportunity for them to get into business for themselves. So I um, became intrigued by that, and my friend Dave got me connected with a coach here in the Chicago area, and I went through a journey over the course of about two uh, to two and a half months. Started in August of, uh, of 2002, and I worked with this coach, and we helped identify what my priorities were, what my interests were, and areas that you know, just made sense for me to give consideration to. And then he found some opportunities for me to look at, and I looked at probably two or three franchises. I looked at a couple of licensing arrangements. I actually looked at a resale opportunity. And that led me to a point of developing real interest in what the coach was doing with me. And he was working me through a process that really intrigued me because it had multi dimensions to it. And I was looking at it from a very holistic perspective that I'll explain a little bit further as we get into our session here. Bottom line is I made a decision in November of 2002 to sign on as a franchisee of the Entrepreneur Source, opened my coaching practice in January 2003, and I had an objective to probably do this business for about five years and then check out of working completely. Lo and behold, if you're any good at math, you can figure out that I've now been at it about 18 years. Uh, so the story changed a little bit along the way, but I've enjoyed what I've done so much and helped so many people to explore business ownership that I've decided I'm just going to keep doing this for as long as the Lord gives me the capability to do it. So my day job, as my wife calls it, uh, is simply this. I'm a coach. I coach people through that process of exploring business ownership and whether or not it is a good uh, perspective or dimension for them to give consideration to. And I, I really do this thing that kind of, if you're familiar with the eHarmony matchmaking approach, that's kind of what I do. I help people to identify what are you really looking for business ownership to provide for you? And then try to help identify opportunities that would make sense for them to get, give consideration to. So it's kind of a process of thinking about possibilities that represent options for someone that might fulfill a dream. And that's probably the simplest way I can say it. So my day job, as my wife calls it. Let's deal with a couple of uh, realities. Businesses don't always work out as everybody hopes that they will. And I share this with you not to scare you, but rather to inform you. The data is compiled by the Small Business Administration, which is an agency of the federal government. And they would simply say that if you start a business from scratch, not a franchise necessarily, but a business from scratch, the odds are one in five that you will be out of business by the end of year one. By year two, jumps up to about 30%. By the end of year five, it's about half of those businesses that were started five years early, earlier are now out of business. So again, I don't share this with you to scare you, but rather to just inform you that you've got to be realistic about this. Why do businesses fail? Probably no big surprises here. Number one is businesses don't create the return on investment that everybody would like as quickly as they would like, and they simply run out of money. Number one reason. Second reason, lack of planning, not having a good business plan to build from. Number three, not really researching the market as effectively as, as should be done to make sure that there's truly a market for whatever it is you're looking to start. Number four, lack of a solid marketing and advertising strategy. And that's really, really important. If you do not have customers for your product or your service, you might find yourself with a hobby. 
and a hobby that can get very expensive very quickly and thus run out of money. The other two items not adapting to change fast enough. Marketplaces change dramatically quick these days. Not having resources that you can tap in to give you advice and counsel. Advisors, as I refer to them. Is business ownership really right for you? You have to ask yourself that very important question of what are you looking for? Are you simply trying to replace a job? May not be the best pathway, but it may be the only pathway, depending on what stage of life you're at. Are you trying to just pay the bills? Maybe you're looking for security. I'm tired of working for the man, as the term is often used. I want to control my own destiny. I want to control my own pathway. You want to manage your own schedule. Main reason why I decided to do my own thing was I wanted to have complete control over the management of my time to be able to do the things that I wanted to do when I wanted to do them. I enjoyed my corporate career. I had very responsible positions. Uh, they compensated me very well for it, but I was missing that one very important dimension, time to spend with my youngest daughter, Katie. Maybe it's a way that you're looking to build wealth for yourself, or maybe you wanna create a legacy for your family or have your kids involved in the business. I don't know, whatever that is. But I gotta tell you this, you gotta be self-motivated. It takes the energy to get up every day and do what you have to do in order to make your business successful. And the toughest thing to get past may be the inconsistency of a paycheck as you start. Because generally speaking, most businesses do not make money for probably at least the first six months that they are in business. Not always the case, but you need to be prepared for that. And can you get past that security or perceived security of a paycheck that shows up regularly? So where do you start? Well, expectations. And I'm gonna ask you a very important question. What are your ill we expectations? Now you might look at me and say, I don't even know what my ill we is. Well, let me help you to understand what I'm talking about. I think there are four key dimensions that you need to take a look at whenever you're giving consideration to having a business of your own. Income, what are your expectations? Do you have a level of compensation that you've been used to and you wanna maintain that, sustain that, or build upon it? What is that number? You need to have that uh, as a guidepost and you need to use it to determine whether or not any business that you're considering can create that kind of income for you. But don't forget about this thing called lifestyle. It's the reason why I left corporate life. I wanted to get into something that would give me, again, a lot of freedom and flexibility, not have to manage people anymore, not have to worry about uh, schedules to the degree that I had, not have the same kind of P&L responsibility that I had in my corporate life. Lifestyle can be incredibly important. Do something that you get up every day and you enjoy it and it gives you the lifestyle that you're looking for. But maybe you have, again, wealth expectations. You wanna create money for the future, uh, commonly referred to as wealth. And you need to have an idea of, well, what am I expecting? What do I want this business to do for me over the course of the next five, 10, 15, 20 years? Do I wanna have a business that creates equity? And what I mean by that is, can you invest a dollar today and when you decide to sell, that you can get $10 out of it? That's called equity. And do you want a business that can create that equity for you so that you, again, get a return on your investment? That's what I refer to as your ill expectations. And you need to be thinking about what are those? Are you wired to be a business owner? Tough question to ask yourself. Now, it's pretty natural to think of, of doing something that you have a lot of familiarity with. But you might ask yourself, well, what am I really good at? Maybe the industry that I've been in and whatever that is. Maybe it's uh, some kind of a manufacturing operation. Maybe you have been in logistics. Maybe you have been in finance. Maybe you've been in customer service. Maybe you've been in sales. Whatever it is, you develop expertise over the course of time and that, that, um, those positions that you had. So what is your expertise? Can you be an evangelist? I'm not suggesting to you that you have to be Billy Graham, but I mean, you've gotta be comfortable because most small businesses are built around a process called networking. And you have to have the ability to get out there and connect with people and communicate with people about what your business is about and how it could bring value to them. Do you have people management skills? If you're looking to scale a business substantially, you need to have a business that uh, um, 
It's going to have maybe 10, 15, 20 people to it. Do you have a people management skills? Can you hire and fire if you have to? How financially stable are you? Number one reason why businesses fail, they run out of money. If you have a spouse or significant other that uh, has a position that can help to support the household during the buildup of your business, that's a perfect situation. But you have to ask yourself that question. Do I have the staying power to stick it out until the business becomes successful? Are you a risk taker or are you risk averse? You really should know. The number one reason why people don't do a business is a simple thing called the fear factor. It's like the what if bunnies sit on your shoulder and whisper in your ear and they talk to you about things like, well, what if it doesn't make money? What if my product isn't good? What if my service is not good? What if nobody buys anything from me? All those kinds of things are the kind of things that represent the fear factors. But I'm going to suggest to you that everything you've ever wanted is on the other side of fear. Fear is about the future. Fear is not about the moment necessarily, but it's about something that you think could happen. And so what I'm going to say to you is, is that if you are very, very risk averse, maybe business ownership doesn't make the most sense for you. Understand what your fears are. Figure out how you have to overcome or mitigate those fears to potentially do a business of your own. But what is your why? This is a book recommendation I'm going to throw out to you. It's a book called Start With Why. It's written by a fellow by the name of Simon Sinek. Now, if any of you uh, happen to be associated with the Willow Creek congregation and potentially attended any of the leadership summits over recent years, Simon Sinek was one of the speakers several years ago and talked about a philosophy that he has about what makes for very successful people in life callings. And he said these words, any person or organization can explain what they do. Some can explain how they are different or better, but very few can clearly articulate why. Why is not about money or profit. Those are the results. Why is the thing that inspires us and inspires those around us? The book focuses on some fairly high profile individuals to kind of give you an idea of what their why was. People like Steve Jobs, who founded Apple Computer. He had a vision to change the world. That was his, his mantra. Martin Luther King, civil rights leader, did tremendous things uh, before he was assassinated back in the late 60s. The book focuses on how do you figure out what is your why? What's driving you to be successful? Because that's what will get you up every day and get you going, is if you understand why you're in business doing what you do. Again, Simon Sinek, you can pick it up on Amazon. If you don't like to read, you can go out to YouTube and plug in his name or plug in the name Start With Why, and you will find uh, a number of TED Talks out there that will give you a good snapshot of what it means to clearly understand what's your why. Passion versus success. I show this little silly cartoon up here. You might recognize the characteristics of it. It's drawn by an individual by the name of Scott Adams, who happens to be the author of the Dilbert cartoon panels, as well as the Farside calendars and a number of other things that focus in that. The cartoon has a purpose. Do you think taxidermy beer hats for four bucks has a big market? If you do, go for it. I suggest to you that there may not be a huge market for that. Scott shared a story in the Wall Street Journal uh, several years ago about his own personal journey of having started five different businesses of which every single one failed. And he got to a point in his life where he wasn't able to support his family because the businesses never monetized the way that he did, thought that they would. He loved what he was doing in the businesses, but again, they never monetized. A close group of friends counseled him and said, Scott, you've got this unique sense of humor about life and business. You have a drawing talent. Have you ever thought of doing something with that? It wasn't on his top priority of passions, but it was something that he said, I think I'll give it a try. Turned out to be incredibly successful for him. He built a beautiful enterprise around the whole idea of using cartoons to, well, just share life with people. And so the reason I share this with you is to say, don't become so enamored with having to pursue your passion. If you have a business that will allow you to pursue something that 
you can enjoy doing and be successful at, uh, you might find yourself in a position where you can actually pursue the things that are life passions for you. What most don't understand is that passion is a result of action, not necessarily the cause of it. Quote by a fellow by the name of Mark Manson. So your own business, you might think of it this way. It's you 2.0. It's the reinvention of you. If you've been a person who has worked for somebody else for your entire life, the idea of being in business for yourself can be both scary, but it can also be exciting. It can be the next dimension of you 2.0. <coughs> Excuse me. So that concludes part one. Next up will be part number two, and we'll talk a little bit about some of the pathways to business ownership. I'd encourage you to take a little break and then come back and view part number two.